Hey, weirdos. I'm Elena. I'm Ash. And I'm Bailey Sarian. And this is Morbid. Woo! Woohoo! Special episode, guys. We have Bailey back on the show. You remember Bailey? Yay! I'm so happy to be here. We are so happy to have I'm you back. I'm so excited. And Bailey's like fun. here. I'm here. I'm in your home. In the flesh. Yes. In the pod lab. This yes. is wild. It's so cool to meet you guys in person. I know. This feels so crazy. Mm-hmm. I know. I feel like we should have like a screen separating us. I know. <laughs> well, we kind of do. I'm behind this mic. That's I can't really true. see you. That's true. <laughs> like, we can just peek out every now and again. <laughs> yeah. I know. I thank know. you for inviting me back. Of course. I you're always tired. welcome. I love you guys so much. I love your podcast. You guys are killing it. Oh, my God, thank <sighs> Don't you. Don't ever give up. Believe in yourself. Oh, my God. I'm I rooting for you. you. Same for you, man. Oh, thanks. To your shed already guys. and we're done <laughs> bye and that's it <laughs> see you later thanks for tuning this in this is our episode <laughs> morbid but positivity i love that <laughs> you know and this it's so weird because i feel like we've already met in person so I know. this is like a, that strange feeling of like well i know you right yeah like, it does like feel that way happened. when i was coming over here i was like we've met yeah we've met. you're like i'm just going over your house yeah of course but we haven't we so, haven't thank you. here we are but now and we i love your home thank you thank you for inviting me into your place your you are space. always welcome in my place thanks so my space. Space. and your space <laughs> <laughs> you need to throw a huge halloween rager here oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's so spooky right yes it's so spooky oh yeah you need, across the street from a cemetery hello yeah Party. Dream. Vibes. That's the dream. We can go party in the cemetery that's, after. That's what sold me on this place. I was like, well, there's a cemetery. That's so. actually very true. It's she true. texted me and was like, there's a cemetery. I think we should get it. <laughs> is it, is you feel like it's kind of haunted? It is. It's super old. Mm. Like not that, well, the house isn't like crazy old. Not well, as old. But it's an old town with like but a it's lot a, of. Yeah. Actually, oh no, I can't tell that statistic because it will give us away. Never exactly. Mind. You know what? Don't triangulate her. No, no. Oh, location. I'm sorry. I'm like, yeah, I love the street you. I'm like naming everything. <laughs> the street that you are no, off No, you said of. cemetery. You're good. I was about to give a fact that would literally give us completely yeah, away. True. I'll tell you after. Yeah. Got it. Got it's it. A cool it's a fun though. one. No facts. Yeah. Noted. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> But you know what? Today we're going to do, we're going to do something fun. We're going to do some listener tales. Yeah. You know, because listener tales are brought to you by you, for you, from you, and all about you. Woo! <laughs> Snaps. Snaps Thanks. for that. You always do it right. I try. Every time. Yeah, Every time. Because I made it up. Impressed. You know, it's easy to remember. I, I made it. You know, I make a lot of things up, though, and I still fuck them up. That's so. true. But you know what? That Relatable. We had to start this episode like three times because I couldn't get the idea that there were three of us in the room and not two. Well, it I mean, happens. to be fair, it's kind of hard. It's just you two forever. It's true. And now I'm just here like, hey, remember? I'm here. You know, <laughs> Hello. Like, Hi. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, it's, you're not. You know, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. But you know, we're going to start this off. With um, an intense one. Yay. Because this one includes Jerry Brudos. Mm-hmm. That's a lot. Which I, we haven't covered Jerry Brudos you yet. haven't? Mm-hmm. No. He's like one of those that I've been waiting to cover. Yeah. Because you got to be in the right frame of mind to cover that guy. Yeah. Yeah. You, know? yeah. you got to be in the right place. Remind me, Jerry's the shoe guy? He's yep. the shoe guy. Yeah. Yeah. What a weirdo. Yeah, he's a real weirdo. Mm-hmm. But... This one's called OG Listener Tale. My mom dated a serial killer. Someone on your future topic agenda. Whoa. So they knew. They knew. It's on my future topic agenda. It says, hey, chicas, where do I start? You can use my name, which is Meredith. And yes, I love my name, too. <laughs> I love your name. <laughs> I was never one of those kids that decided to use my middle name or something. Attached is a double space 13 point PDF attached for the story I've teased. It's Did not you super long. They didn't write Putifa. Putifa. It's it always PDF. <laughs> Terrible. It's, I'm sorry. It's not super long, so I won't apologize for the length. It comes in around eight minutes of reading time. That's the new thing that our listener, our listeners are doing for us. Is they're being like, this is about 14 minutes of reading Shut time. Up. They're mm-hmm. beautiful people. They really wow, are. Wow, that's very kind. <laughs> so yeah. kind. And, and they're doing so a double space PDF like for us because I can't see anything. That's yeah. how I am. Right? It's pretty yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they, it's pretty they great. work with us. That's they, so sweet. They, they put in the work. That's and nice. I appreciate what a that. great community. Yeah, they're, just, they're <laughs> a part of these episodes. Mm. Uh, they also gave us a pronunciation guide. Wow. Which 
See? My subscribers are screwing me over. <laughs> oh they want me to mispronounce it. everything. I say everything wrong. 99% Usually we do. Time, that's yeah. Us. I think that's why we got here. Yeah. Exactly. They were like, you know what? I'm going to help you out with this Oh, one. you're right. They're like, we feel bad. Here yeah, they're like, you guys, yeah. guys can't say They just want me to struggle for some reason. Yeah, you know. But this one, the apparently the town is called Corvallis. Thank okay. you for that. Uh, to be extra clear, that is a hard Oregon R. Oregon. Or, or gone, or, or, Oregon. It's Oregon <laughs> Sorry, Trail. I you. <laughs> it's Oregon Trail. That's why. I know. It's Oregon, but it's Oregon Trail. Exactly. Okay. Remember when they read me to filth for how I said Oregon before? Oregon Trail actually read us to filth. On that. Twitter. The actual Oregon Trail Shut game. Yeah. It was like, it's Oregon. And I was like, get out of here, Oregon Trail. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, you really say Oregon? Yeah. Uh, see, for the well, place. Well, I used to. Oh. It's Oregon. Uh-huh. But. When I refer to the game, it's Oregon Trail. How come? Because I, I grew up saying Oregon Trail. Okay, that's fair. And I think we grew up saying Oregon. I was yeah. going to say, I always said Oregon because my dad used to live in Oregon. And I was like, my you dad moved to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> you live in Oregon. I, but it that's just what sounds I mean. like a nice shape. It does, it does right? actually. Oregon. Yeah, it does, actually. Everyone from there is like, it's Oregon. Yeah. 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 It's rough. How but, funny. Okay. that's I like that, though. But you know what? Massachusetts you you. has Thanks. terrible pronounced names, too. Mm. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say Lemonster. Say, say, say Peabody. There you go. Say okay, Worcester. so Oregon Trail, the game come after you? They did. Yeah, and the game was like, oh, that's all cool. like jokesies, of course. You know, yeah, but I would screenshot and frame that. Yeah. <laughs> no no <laughs> beef with Oregon Trail. But yeah, they were like, it's it's no. Uh, it says, my choir teacher in high school came from Boston and had hey. so much disdain for the Oregon R. <laughs> we hit that consonant hard. <laughs> hard. Uh, also, the Oregonian appears in the story. And Ash, you've gotten it right before, so I know you got this. For your Whoa. mental health, <laughs> Oregonian equals Oregonian. See, I said it right. You did. But also, regional dialects are a real thing, so you do you. See, thank you for ending me. There that is. Because yeah. we're I'll always like, regional dialects, guys. <laughs> we say things different. Um, oh, my ever loving whatever. It has taken me so long to get this out. Please be gentle. Lots of feels involved here. Keep Aww. it real, my lovelies. And they attached a bunch of photos, but we're going to get to the listener too. Yay. It says, dear wonderful weirdos, I've listened to you since your first episode. And while you've come a long, long way, I think you've stayed true to your vision. Thank you. I'm really glad Ash no longer calls herself a trash person, whether or not do. she's drinking questionable Slurpees. <laughs> but I'm secretly really glad she didn't cut the cussing like Pop- Papa suggested. <laughs> suggested you got to keep it real, am I right? Condolences on last year's losses and this year's early struggles. Congratulations on the many, many successes. You're really sweet. Aww, oh, thanks. Specific to Ash and Drew, you're doing the damn thing. Much love to you. Thank you. Specific to Elena, you're an inspiration to wannabe writers everywhere, including me. Aww. I wanted to write from the time I was nine years old, but I was discouraged because my neurodivergent brain could never decide between first person and third person narratives. That took <laughs> Didn't me. Did you struggle with that? Yes. I, I was just going to say. That. It's hard. Aww, Don't don't time. feel bad about that at all because I struggled with that. Yeah. Still struggle with that. I feel like yeah. I would too. Yeah. I gave up with it. It's hard. It's so hard. To this day, I don't know why we can't just call it second person and call it a day, but that was the late 80s. I'm an old broad. And I was called weird, daydreamer, etc. Those things are not untrue, but I was also struggling with an undiagnosed learning disability. Aww. So my husband still thinks I should write one of my personal tales into a book, but the convicted cre- the convicted creepo is out and walking around. So there is possible libel defamation shiz to consider. Damn. That sucks. You can make it like fictional, though. Like yeah, just there you go. Take some artistic license with it and then you can write it down. Boom. I say do it. I actually have several stories to share. Accidental amputation comedy of errors, stalkers, serial rapist encounters. See above the guy who is out and about now. Oh, no. Damn. And I'm not sure how to begin, really, even after years of considering a submittal. Several of the best stories, this being one, are actually my mom's, but she passed away almost five years ago. Sad face. I'm I'm sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. So some details might be a tad inaccurate or fuzzy. I started writing this the day before what would have been her 80th birthday in October of 2022. We didn't know 75 would be her last. Oh, I'm sorry. So hug your loved ones, kids, because grief and regret is the shits. Grief being complicated stuff is why it's taken months on top of months to get this sent. But good for you for sending it. I know. It's taken me yet another five months to get this sent, and since I've just finished listening to Harvey Glattman part one, oof, I think perhaps the time is at hand. Hint, you mentioned one of the main characters on that episode. Oh, yeah, because I brought up 
You did. This man's. <laughs> this man's. In any case, let's get to the case. When I was in my mid-20s, I found out that my mom had dated a serial killer. Imagine just finding that out. No. In your mid-20s, your mom's like, you know what's funny about my life? One time like, I wow. dated a serial killer. All right. I'd be so mad. Right? Like, yeah. Why wouldn't you tell me that day one? Yeah, you got it, like, <laughs> right away. Tell me that when it came out the womb, Mom. Like, yeah. teaching me my ABCs, be like, by the way. <laughs> you know that yes. guy who killed all those people? Yeah. Put this away. Slept with him. I like to say found it. <laughs> <laughs> It came up one day in casual conversation. Super cash, right? I have no idea why she told me told me that she chose to tell me the day that she did. <laughs> Mom was a night owl, always had been. Growing up, if I called to be picked up from school with a tummy ache, it typically took a couple calls to get her on the phone because she was reliably lying down napping. Relatable. Years later, treatment for a previously undiagnosed thyroid problem resolved the majority of the excessive napping, but she was still always up late, really late, like sunrise late. I guess this habit started in her youth, probably high school if she could get away with it. Grandpa was a stickler for proper behavior. But for certain, as a freshman in college, she told me she would sit up at night listening to the radio and smoking cigarettes. Scandalous. <laughs> so as a freshman at Oregon State University in Corvallis, <laughs> Boom. she would sit up late and listen to a local radio station. And for whatever reason, she called the station late one night and spoke to the engineer working the station. From what I recall, after several late nights conversations, he and my mom decided to meet. I oh love God. that this is like the meet cute. In the yeah. Beginning. It's like they were chatting on AIM before yeah. AIM. Yeah, you know? early AIM. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Given that it was 1960 ish, it was probably a very cute conversation where this guy bashfully asked mom out on a proper date. Mom told me Jerry had a kind, gentle, pleasant demeanor and a pleasant voice. Not Jerry. Can I just take a minute right here to mention how terrifying it is that this individual presented as kind and gentle? Yeah, you sure can. Yeah. Wait, did she say how old she was? Uh, she was a freshman in college. Okay, okay. So she was young. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the mental image. I know. That's oh, no, you're, not, you're like, where was this? What yeah. was this happening? You got a picture and all. Freshman in college while she's sitting up late night listening smoking to the sings. radio. Smoking cigs. Calling in the radio station. It's giving me like um, now and then vibes. Yeah. Have you ever seen that movie? No, but I love the candy. Oh. All right. So it works out. <laughs> there you go. Yes. I so you'll say. love the movie. <laughs> yes. That is such a great movie. You got to watch yeah, it. Yeah, you should watch that. It's a nostalgia fest. God, I think I've seen it, but it's, I can't it's remember great. right now, but yeah. 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 This, it's also making me think of an urban legend, Tara Reed being like the radio operator. Yep. Yep. At, like late at night, people calling in and asking like really raunchy questions. Mm -hmm. I love that movie. Yeah. And oh. I love her in that movie. She's so good. Okay, in that I gotta movie. watch it. She's underrated in that movie. Yeah. Oh, really? Reed. Yeah. She's fucking phenomenal in that. That was like the height of Tara Reed. Oh, yeah. Big time. That was like American Pie Tara Reed. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but we digress. This is, <laughs> <laughs> this is where details get really fuzzy. Mom and Jerry went out at least twice. I don't know what the order was and what they did on one or of what I believe was only two dates. But on the date on the date I know about, they drove to the coast together. They drove to, to the, the coast, coast together. Yikes. Because Corvallis is only 53 miles of winding rural highway away. Incidentally, Highway 20 is the longest highway in the United States, starting in Newport and ending 3,151.3 miles later in Boston. Whoa. Look at Whoa. that. But I digress. I'm only guessing that this is the beach they ended up at because it was the shortest route to the coast. The point being that they spent an extended period of time alone in a car with him as he drove on rural highways. That is really scary. <laughs> rural highways that to this day have long, solitary stretches that outside of busy holiday weekends when everyone and their cousin and their cousin's best friend decide to escape to the coast are relatively solitary places. So here's my sweet little mama, all five foot two of her, alone, on a road trip, in a car, with someone who someday will be arrested as a serial killer. And here I am today to tell you about it because he evidently hadn't started killing yet. Oh, that's crazy. So imagine she like realizes it later and she's like, he hadn't even killed anybody yet, but he was like... That might have been like that working was in like, his mind. Was at that he point. thinking about it on that car ride? Was totally. he like practicing something? Like was yeah. she an almost victim? Oh, that's freaky. Right? That's terrifying. That would keep me up. If oh, I that's was the her thing. mom, yeah. maybe that's why she's a late night owl. Oh yeah, maybe. <laughs> full circle, yeah. keeping her up. Because I always think about that with these kind <laughs> of stories. Is like. You are must be constantly thinking that every second that you were with that person, you got away 
with your life. Oh, totally. Like, totally. It could have been totally different. Mm-hmm. Because my thought too is like these serial killers and stuff, they don't just randomly one day decide to kill. It's something that they build up to. So most likely like he was, something was marinating up there in that noggin. The like, right? You know, like he was probably, yeah. He was thinking Freaking about it. Probably, yeah. yeah. Why not? I mean, come on. You He's, know that thought yeah. entered his mind. Oh, Being alone with a woman in a car. Uh, driving like along man, the coast. Isn't that where he usually would like carry that's things the out? Thing, like he was, he would like bring them back to his house. Ooh. Yeah, he's a rough one. I wonder what the conversation was like. I know. You know? And at that point, he was definitely going through it because he he's the one that has all these like issues from childhood mm-hmm. yeah. that he brought into adulthood. So he was like smack dab in the middle of his like Ugh. traumatic issues here. Yeah. And imagine, like the shoe thing. I was just going to say, imagine if he had complimented her shoes. I know. I wonder. Maybe, Maybe she was wearing about ugly them. shoes and that's why he didn't. Maybe. Maybe. That could have been That could it. be the thing that saved her, you know? Because she was wearing her very, that day. Yeah, she's wearing like clogs. That was important. <laughs> that was important. So yeah. it could have been it. Yeah. Damn. Oof. All comes Good down to the her. shoe choice. It does. Thank goodness she got away God, with that's this. scary. Right? Mom told me that they didn't go out more than a couple of times and that while he seemed nice enough, he was a little soft and homely. <laughs> definitely <laughs> homely. You know what? I agree with her. He was definitely oh, yeah. homely. Not a cute guy. And so she just wasn't attracted to him. Makes sense since she ended up with my dad, who was movie star handsome, with Hell broad yeah. muscular shoulders and abs before abs were cool. Get it? Your dad. Yeah, pour one out for your dad. Yeah, pour one out for your dad. <laughs> Seriously, though, go look later at images of this guy in... You, you can, but I don't recommend it. Yeah. Um, and then compare him to say, oh, my God, I was picturing Paul Newman when she said her dad. I That's don't who know I was who thinking. that is. <laughs> you don't know who Paul Newman is? No. Who is that? Oh, man. What's he from? Look up Paul Newman. Okay. Yeah. Have, um, have you ever had his salad dressings, maybe? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Newman's own. Yeah, yeah. I know, uh, I know Yeah, he's guy. like very handsome old movie star. Let's see. Um, Paul Newman from Cool Hand Luke with cr- with golden blonde curly hair with crystal blue eyes. Oh, That's yeah. about what my dad looked like. He's Just saying. So when I say she thought Jerry was homely, she knew she could do better. <laughs> Keep your tits and standards high, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> Great advice. Um, there are pictures for you attached to the email of my teeny mama and my handsome dad. There are puppers too for funsies. Thanks. I love that people just send us pictures of their pets. It's the best. I love that. Mm-hmm. Like they'll tell us a horrific story and they'll be like, but here's a picture of my puppy. Mm-hmm. And it's like, <laughs> but look at my dog. Better. <laughs> Thank you. It's a Keep doing cleanser. it. Some of the listeners may have already figured out that I am referring to the one, the only, drum roll please. Jerome Brudos of such hits as Lust Killer by Anne Rule and episodes 281 and 282 of Last Podcast on the Left, where Henry, Henry specifically says that Jerry couldn't get a date. So when he met his wife, he married her ASAP. But I know, and now you do too, that wasn't entirely true. Welcome to my mom's secret. <laughs> my mom, smart, pretty, and from a good family, went away to college and went out with this nutbag in what I believe was autumn of 1960. Stories indicate he married Darcy in 1961. So it was likely oh, wow. within a year after he and my mom went out into the best of our true crime buff community's knowledge, and we know quite a bit about this guy, but also starting startlingly little. He didn't start killing until several years later, but we also know that he'd been a sexual sadist from a very, very young age. And somehow, there but for the grace, I guess, my mom was left completely untouched and happily ignorant until she got up to get the paper one morning in the spring of 1969, and this is how she described that. Oh my God. She and my dad had been married about three and a half years. They lived on a semi-rural piece of property. Rural is so hard to say. I hate that really word. Hard Every say. time I say it, I have to like, I'm like, rural. Like, rural. Yeah. <laughs> and you like see it coming in the sentence yeah, too. And I'm like, like, yes. <laughs> like, I have to like jog in place uh-huh. for a second to get it right. <laughs> Um, On the edge of what one day would be a flourishing, affluent suburb just a few miles from downtown Portland, Oregon. Oregon. (laughs) My dad had gone to work that morning and mom slept in, as was her routine. But when she got up and wandered down the driveway to get the Oregonian, 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 yeah. Well, now I don't know. Shit. Oregon people. Oregonian. Wait, she gave us the thing, didn't she? Because Oregonian would mean we're saying it all Oregonian. (laughs) Yeah, it's Oregonian. 
Uh, yes, you're pronouncing it right, she said. <laughs> Thank you. Out of the paper box, she unfolded it to find what she described as a six-inch high lettered headline screaming about a killer being caught. And below that was a picture of the man she'd been alone with a time or two. Oof. She said she immediately fell apart. I don't blame her. And with no one else home, she ran across the street to the nearest neighbor who confronted her as, it, as she trauma cried. Or comforted her. Comforted her. He, he confronted her. <laughs> why, are you crying? why are you crying? Why are you crying? Stop crying. Stop it. It's the 60s. There's no crying uh, in baseball. <laughs> that's really all I know. And mom made it clear that she never wanted to discuss this at length. Clearly the very idea that she had been in such close contact with a man that could have ended her life or at least have changed it dramatically was she just more than what she was just more than what she wanted to dwell on. It may also be that because of the era in which mom was raised, she carried some shame from the very fact that she went out with this monster, which is Aww. pretty fucked up. A very victim blamey kind of vibe. Super gross. Yeah. Or maybe it was even survivor's guilt because she made it out alive of the casual relationship they had. Part of me feels like I'm betraying mom by sharing this, and part of me feels like I'm freeing her from the burden. I think it's the latter. I me would too. Say. Either way, if she were still with us, it would be her story to share, but she's not. So let us all release her from these misplaced emotions that she carried. Aww. You are release, mama. Totally release. Happy belated birthday, mom. I love and miss you forever. So keep it Aww. weird, my friends, but not so weird that you innocently accept a date with a total monster and then carry a secret shame for 48 years. Never, ever, ever keep it that weird never damn wow that was wild meredith that was what wild, a story that was really sweet that was yeah. oh my meredith god was so sweet your parents were so cute and he does look like paul oh, and your dad is a handsome movie star yeah, paul he Newman type. he's a tall handsome man a tall we'll drink, drink of water, water. <laughs> oh same, <laughs> there same wave there yeah there you go mm -hmm. so thank you for that meredith i know and happy belated birthday to your mama yeah mm -hmm. and i'm glad she survived that seriously <laughs> my god yeah that was wild i wonder if she had a gut I, there's so many questions you know i know because you wonder like uh -huh, like did she get a gut feeling was there any feeling that she was did ignoring she was weird like what yeah. why didn't she go out with him again that's what i wonder like yeah. the last date they went on like did something happen that uh -huh. left a weird taste in her mouth because totally. he was homely <laughs> and if you look at like I'm gonna look at him if now. you look at the man she married like yeah she knew she could do better there but it's totally. like was there also something that just told her yeah like, or maybe he just had a shitty personality yeah he I, which maybe honestly, like all of it yeah all the above yeah you know it's true yeah like he was a charmer at first like they usually are and then when you find out who they really are you're like wow you suck yeah because yeah. he definitely was not cute no Woof. No. yeah no it's not yeah. a good situation i think there. your mom made the best choice she could have i think she should she came out on top. She, she did. did. Yeah. All right. That's so scary. That was. I wonder, like, how you would feel afterwards. I never really thought about that too much. Like. Reading that headline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, I would probably do what she feel, did, which yeah, is just, like, burst cry, into tears. But, like, also, you probably would have survivor's guilt. Yeah, because you're like, why did I? Yeah, and get how did out I not that? see that? Yeah, I could have yeah. saved people if I would have said something. Yeah, even though you have to take that off of you. Of but course, like, but like that's what thing. survivor's guilt. Yeah, is, is at yeah. its core is like something yeah. that you should never feel because you did nothing wrong, but like you inherently feel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because you're like, did I ignore a feeling? I feel like it would just be very confusing. Like yeah, I just feel like sure. I don't know how to feel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or you probably talk yourself out of it. Like, no, that yeah. wasn't the same guy. Like, there's that no way. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, that's no just way. the same name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oof. Same look and everything, but not the same guy. But you, <laughs> know, that, you know that face. Yeah, yeah that you face don't forget that face. With you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was, uh, yeah, different yeah. looking. He was, he was, was not a looker. Definitely not. All and right. he didn't even have a good personality. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't sound like so he did at all. So many questions. But apparently he was good on the phone. <laughs> all right. That's the thing. I feel like that happens a lot. I yeah. feel like then people like get in front of you and you're like, wait, was that the same person that I was talking to this yeah. whole time? That's what it is. You know, like mm -hmm. back when I was on the apps and stuff and I would talk to people and then you're like, <laughs> when I was on the app, what is this? Uh -huh. you know? And then you meet him in person. It's just like nothing, nothing, nothing there. Yeah. You're like, was I talking to like your talented cousin or uh -huh. something? Your like, talented yeah. cousin. You're, you're good with words, cousin. Oh my God. So this true. makes me so happy that I never had to do the. Yeah, consider yourself the online lucky. dating. Yeah, I would not recommend. No. Ten out of ten, do <laughs> not recommend. Hearing the horror stories, I'm like, my God. Yeah. You're a warrior. Like, I'm very a glad that I went back with Drew and figured that yeah. all <laughs> out because it worked out. And now I don't have <laughs> to do that. For Oof. you guys. Yeah. Thanks. I'm out here on the dating app struggling. Are You're a you? warrior. 
Yeah. Oh, You're a warrior it's over bad. here. It's real bad. I can only imagine. Everyone's Seriously. creepy, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, I'm paranoid. Everyone's a killer in my eyes. Oh, so absolutely. So it's like, how do I yeah. even pick someone? That's the thing. I know. Right? It's hard. You just have to go out with them and just... Hope just for the hope. best. In like yeah. a very, very public place. Uh-huh. I know. And then you're, the there's thing. that fear of like, do they know who I am? Yep. Especially yes. like in yeah. your position, I'm sure. It's scary. Yeah. I know that's a much Weird. stranger yeah. like avenue with all that. Yeah. Dating. Whatever. Oof. Dating. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are we ready for the next one? Heck yeah. I'm read it. my best. I'm, I need glasses, but I'm like regretting. No, it's not that I'm regretting. Regrets. I'm putting off getting glasses. I don't mm. know if I'm ready for All that right. yet. I think what you would look contacts? great with glasses. No. No. <laughs> no. I wear too much makeup. Yeah. That's true. Uh, it, anyways, but I'm going to quit and try my best. <laughs> my grandmother was taking grad school classes at BU, Educational Slay, Ooh. back in the 60s. <laughs> Okay, back in the 60s. And she was temporarily staying with a friend and her roommate in the Back Bay area. One night, after a long evening of jazz, or whatever they did in the 60s. Jazz. <laughs> I love it. Just jazz. Just, Just jazz. Long That's all they did. Of jazz. <laughs> and bell bottoms. <laughs> yes. Ooh, jazz and go. bell bottoms. A good mix. <laughs> she was opening the main door into the apartment, and some guy tried following her in. He said he was there to meet a friend and was hoping that she would let him upstairs. Ooh. Now, my grandmother is nice, but she's also an Aries, Italian, and from New England. A trifecta. Oh, damn. <laughs> my husband has two out of the three of those, and I can tell you. <laughs> what can you tell us? Because to me, I'm like, what does that mean? Aries, they're not going to, they don't They don't take shit. No. Oh, really? They don't take so, any yeah. kind of shit. And oh, they're not going to trust you. I need those you. around me. Yeah, they're not just going to trust you right off the bat. Never. Okay. Yeah, okay. you're going to They got it. their walls up. Mm-hmm. And New England? And New England? New Englanders, no bullshit. Like, okay. Basically, it's just like, if you, if we don't like you, we don't like you. So you're her grandmother is a no shit woman. Oh, yeah. Yep. We it's, love it's, that. Through it's, and a, through. it's a very go fuck yourself. Oh, that. I love <laughs> that. Okay, good for her. Um, so she's actually not that nice. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I should have fi- finished the sentence first. And they said that, not Bailey. Yeah, oh yeah. Um, side note, I felt like you guys would appreciate, everyone in my family is a fire sign. Oh, wow. Ooh. Three generations, grandparents, parents, my brother, and me. Damn. I'm telling you, because when I tell them, they say they don't believe in astrology and resume yelling, quote, passionately across the table. Because they're fire signs, man. <laughs> so she gets behind the door and she makes sure it's locked. Through it, she starts grilling him with questions about who he's here to see, and what floor do they live on. Eventually, she gets a bad vibe. She tells him to fuck off and runs upstairs. <laughs> I call him. <laughs> I didn't even Legend. New England dinner. <laughs> Her remains stewing on the sidewalk. Unfortunately, this wouldn't be the last time at the apartment. Shortly after, my grandmother leaves grad school to start her career and moves back home to CT. Connecticut. Connecticut. Okay, got that. <laughs> While she was home, she got the news that her friend's roommate had been murdered in her apar- in the apartment. Oh, damn. Oh, my God. Like the actual apartment. Yeah. Yeah, she got the news that her friend's roommate had been... Oh, oh my God. She had been strangled with nylons, <gasps> as many of his victims were. I'm not going to share her name out of respect from the family, but most of the info is online. Oh. I'm not sure if my grandmother put two and two together when the murder happened. But when they caught him years later and released his picture, her blood went cold. It was, without a doubt, the guy who tried to follow her inside. Oh my shit. God. Oh, my God. And then you wonder, was he going in there to find her? Oh of course he was. Because she didn't she was, let him in. Oh, Probably. Yeah. Oh, my. I would literally just move. I wouldn't oh. even grab my stuff. I would nope. yeah. just leave. You can have it. <laughs> oh, my God. That stuff has bad Boston Strangler in her jail. his it. scenes were... Horrific. Mm-hmm. He left Natural. those places just a nightmare. Oh my a god, nightmare. how terrifying. Oh. She goes on to say, always trust your gut. Yep. And maybe don't be nice to everyone. Definitely don't be Honestly, nice to everyone. Facts. <laughs> I know I'm facts. really bad at that. Me yeah, too. Right? And it's such it's something I've learned at such a nice a young age to just be kind and nice and yeah. show respect to everybody. Yep. yep. And sometimes, unfortunately, that means you let people walk all over yeah, you preach. in a way because you just don't want to like 
it's just upset what we were anybody. Taught. Yeah. yeah. Like manners. Yep. Yeah. We were all taught that. Yeah. When you're like, you need to be kind, mm-hmm. you need to be nice. And now you I feel can't. like and it's like it's like my Achilles heel, I feel like. Now, yeah. You know? Because it's like Same. right? It just can't be a blanket statement anymore no. to kids. And if like it can't being... be like you always have to be kind. You right. always have to be polite. It's like, no, like when somebody earns it. You be kind. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, don't be outwardly mean out, right out of the gate. No. But you assess the situation. Be an oh, Aries no. Italian New Englander and exactly. have you all That's <laughs> what we need to teach these kids. We all have to channel that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've noticed since dating, it's been like, I just, even though like someone will say something rude, I just give them time to like keep going because I'm being polite. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why am I still being polite? Like, I yeah. just leave. Yeah. Like, it's fuck something that. I have to completely unlearn. Mm-hmm. I want to channel this lady. It's right hard. <laughs> I'm going to channel my New England. Hell yeah. Italian. What was the other one? Aries. Aries. There you there go. You go. Okay. Channel it. Anyways, maybe don't be nice to everyone. No. I'm going to put that on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you don't feel safe. And you're not causing them harm. It's better to just uh, it's better to just have them think you're a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. You might even find that deep down, hey, you were a bitch all along. <laughs> <laughs> a smiley face. I love that. Thank you both for reading. Love you and your podcast so much. This we is from love you. Quinn. Thanks, Quinn. Quinn. Oh, what have, a story. You have the real. nicest little uh subscribers listeners oh they're the best oh they're so sweet they really they are, are like the these listener tales like feed our souls totally because they write the nicest thing wait we gotta get grandma on the line here i need some more hell info. yeah i, I gotta know. hear oh my god poor thing because that's another thing where it's like you would feel this survivor guilt or you feel this like how did i get out of that like yeah. how did i get out of that apartment or just like wow. imagining that you were there like yeah that you and looked he probably would have done it to her like if what would have really, happened oh my god. if she Poor was thing. if she went with that whole be nice to everyone be polite don't be a bitch she would have let him in the building see that that's why that part is what keeps me up at night yeah it's like i gotta learn to mm-hmm. like step my put my foot down because i don't i'm scared of that shit yeah right because yeah. it really is better like what she said it's better People can think you're a bitch. You know what you are. Yeah. Point that's what period. I always say. You yeah. want to think I'm a bitch? So that's fine. I know what I am. And you're yeah. safe at that point. And I'm safe. You know? and I'm a, yeah. yeah. And I'm, I guess that's all that matters. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. all you're I need. You're safe and you know who you are. So that's all that matters. Facts. Love facts. That. I'm putting this next one into a PDF because I can't read. So we'll so just we'll vamp, vamp first. I can't. <laughs> this happens every once in a while. We're like vamp until I put it in a PDF. <laughs> 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 okay. We are good. Woo. All right, so our next tale is called Listener Tales. I also met a murderer. I love that it's like, I also did that. (laughs) Which is great. Because that's the theme here today. I don't even know if we said that at the beginning, actually. Oh, yeah. So the theme today (laughs) is probably the title of the episode. So maybe you guys got it. Yeah, you knew what you're in for. We're doing another installment of I Met a Murderer. murderer. Yeah, Yeah. I don't know why I said how. Like it was how I met your mother. mother. Yeah. 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 How I Met a Murderer. That's what we I should call it. That'd be a good show, actually. Yeah, there you go. I'd watch How I Met a Murderer. Yeah, yeah. I'm and at the end, know. they should make TM, it. Don't put it out there. Yeah, take that and run. You got a TM. TM that's it. our IP. You can't yeah. have it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we discover. We're like, that's legal, right? When we say TM, you can't take yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't really know, yeah, but we'll find know. out. All right. So it says that time I stole the Taco Bell name tag from the guy I sat behind in high school government class to pin on my backpack, and he ended up robbing and murdering someone. Ugh. Wow, that's like a series of events I never would have put together. I ever. hate that Taco Bell had to make its way into that because I love Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell's so good. Who we got Taco Bell last Friday. It was the best mm. decision oh, we ever great. made. I was having a bad day, and I was like, <laughs> I was like, Mikey's dying because I was like. Was it Friday when I was like, I am a goblin? Yeah. Like, I just yep. felt like a goblin that day. You know, yep. you just wake up and you're yep. like, I'm a goblin. Like, nothing's yeah. going to be right. I'm, I'm a troll, not I'm a goblin, a troll. but that's okay. You're a goblin. Yeah. I'm a troll. What about you? What are you? Probably just a bitch. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Me? I'm just a bitch. You know? I don't know. And own I it, literally was it. like, it's Taco Bell today. Yeah. Like, I'm full goblin. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Let's get you 85 into tacos. It. What do you get? Oh, yeah. a quesarito mm. and two oh, soft tacos. Mm. You got it in the crunchy Dorito taco. That's oh, what you got. I love the Dorito. I love I'm the a crunch. Crunchwrap Supremer. Oh, oh yes. Oh. I love a crunch. Mm-hmm. I don't that, know like, if chemical I like a crunch. cheese. A crunchy taco. Chemical mm. cheese. Yeah. yeah. And then, oh, those, sorry, not sponsored by Taco Bell, but like those but sponsor cinnamon us. roll. I know, those cinnamon. Cin- oh, oh, my God. Those are so good. Oh. If you oh. order those like late night and then you oh. wake up in like the middle of the night at like 3 a.m. Oh, and you yeah. just like pop a couple of those, you're like, and that's pure happiness. Your mouth. 
Yeah, they do. That's I what mean, life is all about. Well, I life. want those now, Truly. specifically. Actually, forget this. I'm going to Taco Bell. I'm like, so <laughs> we're ending the so episode. Fun. Bye. <laughs> Taco Bell time. Let's right. go. But this person stole somebody's Taco Bell name tag, not their delicious treats. It says, hey, weirdos. I'll start with the obligatory gushing about how much I love your podcast. Thank you. I found you in the last year and love listening to you girls as I get ready in the morning while doing laundry, driving by myself, and really any other time I can get far enough away from my 7 and 10 year old so that I won't traumatize them. Just yet. (laughs) Just yet. Just yet. Love that. I'm an elementary music teacher in rural Missouri. Rural. I know. Rural is making its way. Rural is the secondary theme today. Mm -hmm. It says, despite what you see in the news, don't worry. We are not all closed-minded people who would hunt other humans down with a hunting rifle just because they don't agree with us. That's really good to hear. That's like a great... (laughs) Thank you for that. Yeah, great sponsor for Missouri. Yeah. (laughs) And it's been my experience that true crime... The Sorry. That true crime type shows and podcasts are a stress relief for educators. Hmm. Not sure what that says about our psyche, but I go with it. (laughs) Well, you guys are going through it. You got to contend with a lot as an educator today. For real. Like literal heroes, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Pay them more, goddammit. Pay them them millions. We all want them to make more. I want them to make so much money. I say it all the time. Yeah, they should. They absolutely oh, should. Because I can't. We tried. We can't do it. No. Well, and everything they deal with now, especially, but oh. also I was an asshole when I was little. Yeah. And even just yeah. like teaching kids. I'm like, you deserve way more money. Oh, mm. we tried to like do, because we held our kids out during like the height of COVID. So we were like, okay, well, we got to keep them. They were only in like preschool, but we yeah. were like, we're going to yeah. keep the curriculum going. Even that, John and I were like, I don't know how teachers do this. Like, I don't know how to do this. Mm -mm. Like, teaching them to read, I don't know how to, because I'm just like, I just know how to do this. So I don't know. Yeah, you're like, see that word? (laughs) Yeah, like, say it. That's okay. I'm like, that just says that. (laughs) It just says should. Or they'll ask me, like, why does that say should? Like, that doesn't look like there's an L in it. And I'm like, I don't know, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, the, it the makes English sense language is now, weird. Growing up, when my parents would be like, "I don't know," it just is. Yeah, it just and I is. couldn't yep. accept that as a kid. I'm like, "Why?" But why though? But it's like now, in reality, you're like, "I literally yeah." You're don't like, know. "It should because it should." Okay? Yeah, just accept <laughs> just it. Just the way it is. <laughs> just memorize that one. There's no yeah. convention so along with it. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of times we're just like, "I don't know." That's what it says. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's it. I love you so much. But <laughs> love you. But ask yeah. your and then I'm like, ask your teacher, and then I'm like. Pay her more. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. The exactly. circle of life happening right yeah. there. Yeah. But this person says, I'm also one of those weirdos who listens to Morbid to fall asleep at night. So there you go. I kind of love I that. love hearing that. Same Z. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so soothing. It's so funny. <laughs> I also feel a kinship to you girls, especially Aww. Elena. Hey. As we fall squarely in the same age group, and I understand all of your cultural references and giggle when Ash misses some of Elders. them. Elders. Yes. <laughs> I'm always like, wait, what? <laughs> like Paul Newman. <laughs> yeah, like Paul Newman. It just happened. Yeah. Love you, Anyway, girl, thanks. Love you too. <laughs> okay, on to the story. It's the fun of it. I just got done listening to your listener tales that time I met a murderer and realized I too have met a murderer. When I was in high school, and oh, excuse me, when I was in high school, I hung out with some rather, shall we say, sketchy people. We've all been there. It was one of those my high school boyfriend <laughs> was kind of on the edge and hung out with people who pretty much off the edge. So <laughs> I hung out with them by proxy, sort of thing. You know that thing. Yeah, that. My boyfriend ended up ended up a great guy and is now a contributing member to society. Woo! But for context, his high school best friend was murdered a few years ago in a sketchy situation. But that's actually another story. Damn. We need that one, too. I know. Sad. Right? I, ha- I sort of had two personas. One me that got almost straight A's was first chair saxophone in band, rarely broke curfew, and was a Girl Scout. For real. Whoa. I love that it was like, for real, no, I really was. I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm not lying to you. Right I now. had the badges. <laughs> I got well, the How cookies. many badges? I wonder. <laughs> I want to know. <laughs> Do you still have any Thin Mints left? <laughs> <laughs> and then there was the other me that hung out in a back parking lot on the weekend, smoked behind my parents' back. I later found out that they knew all along. Parents, am I right? They always know. They always know. And they always tell you later I do that whole time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've gotten yeah. a lot of those. Oh, yeah. Yep. Drank at parties and apparently hung out with future murderers. I don't really know much about astrology, but I'm a Sag. Don't know if that says something about me here, Ash. Oh, are you? I am a Sag. Oh, so you're a fire sign. Am I? Yeah. Oh, Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'm a Sag rising. Mm. Um... I don't know if like what that really says. I don't know a lot about Sages in general. Oh, we're just, right before my sign. That's all I know. Yeah, we're fiery, fiery, and we want to like run away and like start new things a lot. Oh, we want to run and be free. Don't give yes. any rules. No you know? rules. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. So 
maybe that was like a different part of your sign, like your birth chart, like arguing with the Sag side, you know? That makes sense. Yeah. Because it's like I was out. I was like rebelling against mm-hmm. everything. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I like it. Yeah. So anyways, one of my boyfriend's best friends, aforementioned guy who got murdered, his friend sat by me in my government class. This was after my high school boyfriend and I broke up, but we were... We were all still friends, so a friend of a friend would flirt with me some, and even though I really didn't like him that way, he did always strike me as a bit creepy. I would sort of flirt back because high school girl. Out of all the guys in this group, he was always the one that gave me the weirdest feeling. Trust your gut, people. It's true. He just started working at Taco Bell and would wear his name tag to school sometimes just to be weird, I guess. Dude, right. a couple of kids did that in my school. Did they really? Yeah, yeah. it was like a like I got a job. It was like a flex. <laughs> Look at I my job. Like Jack in the Box or Target. <laughs> <I> did, <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, I never got a name tag at any of my jobs. I got one at Hollywood Video. There you go. That was oh, my you favorite. You worked at a video. I worked store. at a. It was my mm-hmm. favorite job. Ah, oh, that's was, like the coolest. I, I would always still wanted work to. at a video store if there was a video Me store. Me too. Though. I would love to be like the rewind girl. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, um, Blockbuster's making some kind of comeback. Did you hear that? No. Uh, all of your heads just turned. <laughs> <We're> like <laughs> their um, website just like reactivated for the first time in like years. Are we really? bringing VHSs back? Let's go. I don't know. Be I'm kind ready. rewind. I'm ready. Be kind rewind. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Yeah. I want to go on a Friday night. I want to see if that box is there. Like it's like the risk. The anticipation. Is it going to be there? Is it not going to? Am I going to have to wait another week I had to wait for someone so to return long it? for Titanic. Yes. Oh my too God. And it was really? the two VHSs? Yeah. yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. remember much about video stores. Oh, it was yeah. such a time. Yeah. We it's missed okay. a really good era. Yeah, I, yeah. I did. Sad for you. Sad you know. for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he was wearing his name tag to school. Very strange. Um, la di da do. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I lost my place. <laughs> la di da do. That's what it says. Yeah, that's exactly what it says. <laughs> Shuba da ba. Well, his name tag was in the shape of a jalapeno pepper, and I just thought that was funny. So we made some kind of trade. I now don't remember at all the actual circumstances, but I ended up with the actual name tag pinned to my backpack. We were juniors at the time, and even though he didn't end up graduating, I left the name tag on my backpack for the rest of high school. As a matter of a fact, my mom keeps literally everything, and I was up in her attic not too long ago and came across that backpack, and the name tag is still on there. Oh, damn. That's crazy. Now, fast forward about a year from graduation. I'm a freshman in college doing my own thing and have pretty much forgotten about Taco Bell name tag guy. I get a phone call from my mom, and she's like, do you remember Taco Bell name tag guy? (laughs) She obviously said his actual name, of course. I was hoping she said Taco Bell name tag guy. Me too. I like that better. (laughs) I was like, yeah, why? Well, apparently he and this couple, um, they were using some kind of drugs, broke into an older gentleman's house to rob him. They thought he wasn't home or something, but it turned out he totally was home. So Taco Bell name tag guy stabbed him to death oh. before they all ran out to get uh, uh, to the getaway car driven by a guy I also went to high school with that was actually a pretty good kid. He apparently got in too deep with these jerks. The couple that was with him were quite a bit older than us, and I did not know them. I mean, I always knew he was a little bit creepy, but I never thought murderer type creepy. But as my mother would attest to, I have no intuition (laughs) and would definitely be the first one to die in a horror movie because I would be the one that didn't heed any warnings and explained everything away like an ostrich with its head right down in the ground. But you know what? You know that about yourself. Yeah, and, and that's that's well, at least good. She's aware. Yeah, so awareness <laughs> is the first key. Yeah, it's it's the to first survival. step. You know. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. If I, you didn't know that, I'd be worried. Mm-hmm. I also think I would die first in a horror movie. One hundred percent. But you wouldn't because you know that, and because I know that. So boom. So I'd be in that movie with you, and I'd make sure. Okay. Thanks. Don't worry. Love Aww, that. That's so sweet. <laughs> right. I'd be the dumb ass who's like. What is that? Let me go check. <laughs> yep. Hello? And then we'd say, no, no, <laughs> <out there>? no. no. <laughs> so needless to say, when I came across my backpack with his name tag on it, I got some serious goosebumps. And the more I listen to your podcast, the more I'm thinking, should I burn that backpack and, sh- and sage my parents' attic, you know? Anyway, that's my I also met a murderer story. I'm also going to put a couple links to true crime stories that happened in or are related to my hometown in case you ever wanted to do an episode on wow, any of thanks. them. Because even in rural Missouri, crazy stuff like this happens. Thanks if you made it this far in my story and keep it weird, but not so weird that you break into a guy's house and stab him to death, okay? Yeah. P.S. I have attached adorable pics of my kids and fur babies. Oh my goodness, the cutest of all babies cute. everywhere. Yeah, really cute. You know what she should do? She should... um. Find what prison he's in, the yep. Taco Bell guy, and mail the name tag back to him. 
Oh my god, that's oh a good idea. Yeah, Can he you probably needs it. He yeah, they could does. just take the like the sharp part off of it and give it back to him. Yeah, yeah give him this jalapeno know? pepper. Okay, that would be probably good. need this in jail. Something to look at. Yeah, you know, <laughs> something to look at. <laughs> something to do. You're always looking for you something know? new. I love it. I think that's a great idea. All right, so my next one is listener tales. Wanted murderer bought me a bikini. But why though? But why though? <laughs> that's what we're all asking. <laughs> Let's see. And can I use your name? Yes, Hillary. I can. Thank Hillary. you for telling me that. What's good, my spooky beaches? I've attached my listener tale in the form of a putafa, which is about the time I helped the police catch a murderer in my hotel and the creepy shit that live, live, bleh, led up to that fateful day. This is where I tell you to cut it down if it's too long, and it's where you say you won't. Never. <laughs> also in this email is the security footage. Oh, my God. News clippings and mug shots. Oh, my lord. I love security footage. Mm -hmm. She came through. All right, so this says, the time I assisted a SWAT team in taking down a wanted murderer. Wow. Imagine just being able to say that. I know, that's that a sentence. Time. <laughs> you could really, like, win two truths and a lie with that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It says, oh my God, if you're reading this, it means you're reading this. We're reading this. Give me a second. They Let are reading this. Together. <laughs> we are, are reading, this. reading this. I am watching it happen. It's true. It's <laughs> happening. I am currently sitting on my couch at 11.30 p.m. Both my toddlers are sleeping and I am not. I feel that. Why, you ask? Because I have crippling ADHD that has made it literally impossible to turn my brain off. In between researching how cuttlefish cam camouflage themselves while also being colorblind, I've got Miss oh, wow. Rachel songs playing randomly in my head. If you know... You know, Deb Deb knows because she know loves Miss Rachel. Yeah, and I know so that's the thing with like when you have like kids all day, you're like, I can't wait to sleep. But then when they go to sleep, you're like, I just need to be alone for a minute and like mm. shut everything off. So you end up mm. staying up until like 1130 or 12, uh. just being like, I just need this alone time. That's why they're in my three to five year plan. There you go. Not the right now plan. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, I have no plan. <laughs> I like, like my, my time and sleep. Love no. it. Uh, wait, wait. In, so researching cuttlefish, you know, I feel that because I go on like crazy little. I love doing that. Right. I and love one like, little thing. Mm -hmm. And Insect, then I'm off. No, I, so I went down a rabbit hole about sloths. Oh, ooh. I learned so much about sloths. I Do you know sloths. they can attack people like very quickly? Oh, I did no. not know that. Oh, I was watching sloths snatch people. Oh, are you serious? Yes. I yes, didn't even they're know coming God. for us. They're coming in for us. In slow mo. But then they like, mm. <laughs> and don't they have like really long, like sharp mm -hmm. fingers? And so they can. I, have, I know why. I it's so when they hold the thing, the claw wraps around the branch, not their hand. Wow. Isn't that interesting? And they also swim really far. Ooh. Thank you. Know you that. Sloth, sloth knowledge all day. I have it. And you know what? <laughs> Sloths always look like these little cutie pies, uh -huh. and you don't mind that they have those giant acrylic nails because you're Speak like, well, for you yourself, won't hurt I anyone. But when you first look at it, you're like, you're not going to hurt anyone because you're a sloth. You just have pretty nails. I'm going to be like, no. now knowing... sloth attacking people videos. Yes. Please do. <laughs> I need to be aware of this. I would just walk up to one and be like, uh -huh. what's up, sloth? But now. <laughs> not anymore. Now I will mm -hmm. not. Ooh. All right. I was first introduced to your podcast while I was pregnant with my daughter. I was an avid listener of a different true crime podcast, but was getting tired of how polite they were. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> and how they left out a lot of the details because, well, I'm fucked up. I listened <laughs> to one of their episodes and was not satisfied with the information, so I went to the interwebs to find out if any other podcasts had covered it. Yours was the first one that popped up. So I scrolled back and found the episode. Within five minutes of pressing play, you had called one of the players a fucking dingus, and I knew I had found my people. <laughs> Sounds like us. Yep. Yes, it does. I've since listened to almost every episode and love how the podcast is evolving. Thank Thanks. you. I just listened to the plane crash survivor episode and absolutely loved it. Thank you. I pre-ordered Elena's book the day it was available. Aww. Thank you. And I listened to the entire thing in two days of the day it was released. Aww. It was amazing. And I'll definitely sign whatever petition gets you to write a sequel because Jeremy needs to get his comeuppance. Well, don't worry. You don't need to sign a petition. I was going to say, by the time <laughs> this is out, you'll hear the news. Yeah, there will be another one. Uh, and thank you. That's really cool to hear. My name is Hillary, and please use my name. After birthing two kids, I'd love to have a non-embarrassing reason to pee my pants. <laughs> I feel that so hard. It just takes a sneeze. Oh, no. uh, so this story starts back in 2015 while I was working in a hotel at the front desk. As customer-facing jobs go, hotel front desk is by far the worst I've ever experienced as far as customer abuse goes. I, I can hear imagine. That. I hear that a lot. Yeah. People, because you, you also have to deal with the late night people. Yeah. You know? 
People who stay in hotels are entitled as fuck, and I hate most of them. Oh, no. (laughs) I was used to weirdos. I was used to people cussing at me. I dealt with a dude high on LSD who decided that my housekeeping manager was in grave danger and cornered her in a room and was literally body slamming the door to try and get in to save her. Oh, my God. I had a woman call me a cunt at an ungodly decibel because our outdoor pool was closed for renovations in the middle of the fucking winter. Well, that's your fault. The whole thing started on a Monday on a Monday evening. Two men came into the lobby and asked if we had availability. We had a few rooms open, so I booked them a room. He mentioned that he didn't know how long he was going to need to stay. I let him know that we had availability that whole week and to let me know before checkout time whether he wanted to extend for another day or two. Totally typical walk-in. Checked in with a legit credit card and legit ID using the name Paul Cunningham. He was very charming. We carried on our conversation easily. I handed him his keys and he and his companion, who had, who had been completely silent this whole time, walked up the stairs and went to his room. The next morning, yes, I was working the next morning. My GM was a literal nightmare and had me scheduled to work from 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. and then 6.30 a.m. to 2.30 oh, p.m. the next day. Oh. Clopin, chef. The clopin. Oh, not a clopin. I hated the clopin. Oy. She also once sent me home from, for coming to work with no makeup on bitch (laughs) i didn't say that but i agree no uh he came to the i would be sent home like every day Uh, (laughs) he came to the front desk and made conversation while he drank his coffee it was a little friendlier than i was comfortable with but it wasn't any different than the other weirdos i had dealt with just smiled and continued to talk a little background on me i was raised in an extremely oppressive religion which now I've, i've been deconstructing for the past three years it was definitely a cult Mm. my place in the world was ingrained in me men were superior and women were to follow behind them they led we submitted no matter what that's awful this led me into abusive relationships one ending with a broken jaw and no will to live oh my god jesus i learned to give men what they wanted because if i didn't i'd either be yelled at or beaten up that's awful it was easier to acquiesce i love that word Thank you for That's using that. That's a really good that. word. That's a I haven't great heard that word. word in a long time. And ooh, that felt. Can I get a definition, please? That just felt like. I know, right? What does I think it's, it's basically like acquiesce. Like I'm just going to. It was easier just to like submit almost. Just to oh, like okay. put it out of your brain and just go with the flow. Okay. Oh. Acquiesce. Place of origin. It just. <laughs> Pirates of the crew. You have to Google that one. <laughs> just want to pretend I'm on the spelling bee. <laughs> Well, she did say, am I the only one who can't use that word without thinking of Pirates of the Caribbean? How funny. Also, Let's do see. you say Pirates of the Caribbean or Pirates of the Caribbean? People say this different. Caribbean. I think I say it like Caribbean. both ways, like interchangeably. See, when I'm, this is another weird word. When I'm talking about the Caribbean, I talk about it as the Caribbean. Sure. But Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> it's oh, that's like, funny. It's yeah. like Oregon and Oregon Trail. Yeah. I don't know why. I do the same thing. I never really thought about right? it. Huh. Like Pirates I'm, of like, the Caribbean. Oh, you're going to the Caribbean? Mm-hmm. But then I'm like, did you see Pirates, Pirates of, of the Caribbean? Caribbean? See, I just said Caribbean when I went to say it without thinking. See, Pirates of the Caribbean sounds insane to me. That's funny. Also, <laughs> acquiesce means to accept accept something reluctantly without protest. And it is a verb. Submit, basically. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. exactly Ooh, what you said. Okay, yeah. challenge. Try and so use that word go. today. There you go. It's a word of the week. Organically. I will not acquiesce to that. <laughs> sporadically. <laughs> sporadically. <laughs> not sporadically. <laughs> <laughs> he and his friend came to the front desk and asked where, asked where the mall was. After I told him, he asked me what bra size I was. Wow, that escalated quickly. I know. Damn. Um, <laughs> no last name? Or, uh, uh, what, yeah, right? <laughs> I laughed because... What? <laughs> and he kept on, you're so skinny. I bet they don't even make them that tiny. I'd be like, I quit. Ew. I'd, I quit. Ew. I quit. Then why ask? Which yeah, right? was super gross because he seemed to really be happy about that. Uh. After awkward laughs, he left. A couple hours later, he came back with a bikini from Victoria's Secret. Oh, my what God. The fuck? I gotta go. Like, I gotta go. I'd be calling someone. You I would did say not have to just deal give with me this. the money, sir. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I hate that you had to stay at your shift and, like, work after dealing with this, too. For real. It yeah, really freaked me live. out. But I again, mean, no. Ugh. <laughs> but again, he's a man and Victoria's Secret is expensive, so I accepted his very generous gift oh. and he went up to his room. Oh, no. I'm really glad that you, like, deconstructed that way of thinking. Yes, mm-hmm. me too. Because mm-hmm. that's really sad that that was, like, drilled into you. 
He extended his stay again the next morning and asked if I had tried on the bikini he gave me. Ew. I said that I hadn't, but quickly let him know that I was working basically back-to-back shifts and hadn't had time. God forbid I should offend him. He said I needed to take pictures for him when I put it on. I'm leaving. Oh, That's for, so funny. Like, we were literally just talking about this. Being polite. Yes. We yes. uh-huh. were thing. just talking about yes. this. Yep. And these are the times when it's even sadder when it's been like, really drilled into you as a kid totally. yeah. like part of like the tenements of your moral Religion code kind of everything. thing yeah. instead of just like a blanket you need to be nice it's like not only that this is part you of your God. entire mm-hmm. being yeah mm-hmm. like oof that's loaded very loaded so he said he needed to take pictures and she said oh for sure i said with an extremely convincing convincing customer service smile he left the desk and i didn't see him until the next day I was working an afternoon shift, and when I got into work, I saw that he had extended again. Great. What am I going to say when he asked to see the pictures I didn't take of the bikini I didn't try on? After a couple hours of normal hotel stuff, check-ins, room changes, housekeeping requests, etc., I hear, psst, no, from around the corner of the desk. I couldn't see who it was, but I looked in the big convex mirror we had in the corner of the lobby and saw that Creeps McGee was trying to get my attention in the mirror. He was motioning for me to come to him. Mm. My body was screaming, fuck no, but my traumatized by religion brain could only obey. So I walked around the corner. I know I'm an idiot. You are not not an idiot. You were traumatized. Yeah. (laughs) That is not being an idiot. It's also one of those things where like, what are you going to do in that situation? Yeah, that's the other thing. Like you're just going to react like right away. You are by no means an idiot for doing that. Mm -mm. He looked over my shoulder a couple of times like he wanted to make sure no one was watching. And from inside his boxers, he pulled out makeup. What? What? What Well, at least it was makeup. Okay, that's how you get me. You're a serial (laughs) killer. What kind of? You're like, uh oh. Uh -uh. Like, you're creepy. He pulls out makeup from his boxers. (laughs) All right, I'm in. (laughs) I'm like, is that Pat McGrath? I know. I'm like, Sephora? Okay. Okay. I'll take some of that. Well, he pulled out three random brushes, an eyeshadow palette, mascara, and foundation in a Ziploc baggie. Wow, this is bizarre <laughs> yeah. whole this is bag. bizarre behavior he i pulled out a whole face this. out of his he boxers <laughs> and he said go yeah go forth this is weird what the actual fuck i saw these and thought you would like them he what? said almost sheepishly I gotta go he didn't say he bought them they weren't in a shopping bag and they didn't have any plastic on them or wrapping to indicate that they hadn't been opened before Again, this really weirded me out, but I accepted. Oh, poor thing. I was, I was just glad he didn't ask me about the bikini pics. The next, the rest of the night went by without incident. Wait, you know what I'm thinking? He's a wanted murderer. Is that his, like, previous victim's makeup? Oh, my. Plot twist. Right? Oh, my. Honestly, probably. And oh. saying I thought you would like these? Like, what? Yeah. Right, because they don't have plastic on them. Like, they've no. clearly maybe been used before. Ew. Oh, and no. even if they were like lightly used or something, hell, you're right. And they're yeah. just like in a Ziploc baggie in his pants. I re- I think that's, that's where we're thing. headed. Oh. I gotta know, like, why do they you- have to be in your pants? Could, couldn't yeah. you just hold it? And bring it down. No, because that's weird. Yeah, that's that's weird. <laughs> that's, that's a little like, much. You're just putting it in your pants yeah, and walking that makes up more and being sense. like, "Well, I have a present for you." We'll like, see a magic trick. Like, yeah. that's like, oh. like close up magic. Oh no, Oof. I don't love Poor it. Poor girl. I She's feel really bad. Yeah, stuck in this. Oi. On my next shift, which was the morning shift, I started my day with him extending his stay again. But he changed the credit card on file and went back up to his room. Interesting. At around 10 a.m. on a very slow Thursday, a man wearing a white billabong t-shirt and cargo shorts. Wow, what a what a vibe. Mm-hmm. A walked briskly up to the desk. He pulled a detective's badge out from under his shirt and put it very discreetly on the desk. I was too stunned to say anything, so I just looked at him wide-eyed. He pulled out his phone with a mug shot, pulled up on the screen. It was Creeps McGee. I knew it. He had long hair in the photo, but it was definitely him. The detective asked if he was here, and I just nodded. With his index fig- finger, he scrolled up on the screen to reveal something that my stomach made my stomach fall out of my butt. Do you see what that says? The detective asked quietly. 
there in big, bold, black leather letters was wanted for murder. Oh. Can you imagine having a detective be like, you see that right there? You see wanted that? Wanted for murder? <laughs> I'd also be like, are we on law and order, sir? I'd be like, yeah, you I just... fucking see that. Yeah, like, I know. I'd be like, you could also just tell me. Yeah. <laughs> we don't Actually, have I to can like... read, sir. It's okay. <laughs> Listen, Billabong. <laughs> You're just waiting for the like, doom, doom. <laughs> and it's like, is everything all right? I felt all the blood drain from my face and must have and it must have been obvious because all the detective said was which room is he in? I love Alex. This, guy is, this guy's living for this. Uh-huh. You know he put that outfit together. Oh, he yeah. was like, I need to look like a beach goer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's the vibe. vibe. I will do it for me. Right? <laughs> I want to keep everybody off their game. I quickly told him and he walked out the door, returning moments later with six other plain clothed agents. Holy shit. He asked if the rooms on either side of the suspect were occupied and I let him know that they were. His first initial plan was to breach the door, but but decided it was too risky with civilians in the neighboring rooms. He then decided that they would set up a sting operation in the hotel lobby. Oh my god. The other officers cleared out the lobby of other guests, instructing them to go up to their rooms or to leave the premises. I would have been so pissed. I'd be like, can I please stay? I'd be like, I'm going to leave the premises. (laughs) See you later. Oh, I would would stay. Right? I'll leave the premises. With my little binoculars. Yeah. I was going to say, I'll just peek through the window. (laughs) And a little continental breakfast. Uh Yeah. (laughs) I'll grab a muffin on my way out. (laughs) Crappy coffee. Yep. Uh, They took spots all over the lobby. One pretended to read the paper Oh, I would stay at this point. This if is they're incredible. setting up in like that's a what I full mean. Tableau, then I am. I'm gonna be. I'm this gonna like let wild. me read the paper. Mm-hmm. Let me be one of these right? people. Uh, so one of them pretended to read the paper at a table in the lounge. Another pretended to peruse the gift shop. Amazing. I noticed in particular the one reading the paper because he was fine AF. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have minded being arrested by him. I don't think. <laughs> I Amazing. love you, Hillary. At this point, the lead detective told me I needed to call him down to the front desk. I was like, "Ah, excuse me? If you don't get that reference, you need to watch Pitch Perfect immediately. He said that. I just read it as it was thing. I have not seen Pitch Perfect, I think Aka, excuse me, because like Acapella, Acapella, maybe. I thought it was, "Ah, excuse me, Mm. which I... I've never seen Pitch Perfect. I like better. (laughs) I saw it, but I don't know. I don't know. Acapella, you're right. We'll circle back. Yeah. You know what? We'll come back to that. Watch party later. We'll watch. We got now and then on the docket Yep, mm-hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. He said that all I needed to do was get down, get him down here and that said I could use his credit card as an excuse. So with all the poise I could muster, I was about to call up to room 209 when the phone rang. No. I looked at the display and it said Cunningham Paul 209. No. I looked at the detective and said, he's literally calling me right now. What do I do? He just motioned for me to answer it. And so I did. I had no idea what I was going to say, but thankfully Creeps McGee asked if he was if we had a business center with a computer he could use. I let him know that we had one in the lobby and he said he'd let, he'd see me in a second and hung up. Sure enough, he came downstairs and crossed the lobby into the business center. I just smiled at him and pretended to click away on my computer. Only moments later, he came back out to ask for printer paper and the officers swarmed with guns drawn. The lead detective's voice boomed, don't move or I will shoot you. Oh, my God. That is the closest I've ever been to the business end of a handgun, and I don't ever want to be any closer. I backed up against the wall, and he was taken into custody without incident. I found out his name was actually Angelo Doing. Is that? Yeah, Doing, 31 years old. And he was wanted for a group assault in which the 24-year-old victim was beaten to death. Oh, my God. He had been on the run for four months at that point and was apprehended because someone called in an anonymous tip. After searching his room, heroin, a box cutter, a hunting knife, and two guns were recovered. Holy shit. Nice. I asked the detective if they needed the things he had given me, and they said that they didn't, which was almost disappointing because I felt like throwing away the things he gave me would be rude, and that made me feel really guilty. Really, throw them out. <laughs> Religious trauma is so real. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, my coworker recognized how insane that sounded and took them from me. We love it. I don't know what she did with them, but I'm sure they ended up in a parking lot dumpster. I've attached a couple news articles along with his mugshot and the security footage of the actual takedown. Which we will be watching. Hell yeah. Thanks so much for taking the time to tell my story. Keep being awesome and always keep it weird. But not so weird that you allow a religious cult to mentally beat you down so much that you let a murderer buy creepy things for you and then feel guilty for being part of a sting operation that takes him down. To be clear, (laughs) I now think of that day with pride and no longer feel guilty. Fuck his feelings. There you go, Hillary. Much love, Hillary. 
oh so my relate God. to that. Feeling Damn. guilty for taking him down. Right? Yeah. Being like, part of the sting operation. Poor As he's being led away in cuffs. Yeah, I'm so sorry about that. My so bad. Sorry. But I'm now so sorry. Hillary Hope you enjoyed says, your stay. Yeah. fuck your feelings, <laughs> Do you want a mint? Uh, <laughs> just throw one at him. <laughs> so sorry. Wow, she came through with receipts. She, she did. did. I Big love really that. Did. She gave you security footage. I okay. love that. Whenever Incredible. we get a video, I of love something, a good I'm video. Like, oh, mm-hmm. Me too. Oh, me too. Killing it. Wow. Wow. That was that's scary. Damn bonkers. That really delivered. So, um, next story. Ready? Oh, I'm ready. Hey, weirdos. My name is Sage, and you can totally use it. Ooh. I will literally explode from excitement. Ooh. Don't do Whoa. that. Sounds I hope you're hot. okay. <laughs> and I'm a huge fan of the show. I feel connected to you guys in a way that I just don't with any other podcast. And you do a great job at doing what you do. Thank you. Oh, Thanks, so Sage. Sweet. I'm sorry this can't be in a PDF. I have the computer skills of a worm with brain damage. <laughs> we were just trying to figure out how to airdrop I something. Mean, we're so fine. Fine. <laughs> Essentially same. So, <laughs> And I apologize for how long this may be. I am autistic and a chronic rambler. Never apologize. Never. Longer the better, baby. Hell yeah. So on to the story. I'm from a small town in southwest England, which is very historically significant and very haunted. Can I live there? I know. (laughs) I have tons of my own stories I could send in, but this one is my boyfriend's. I will be calling him F because the area he lives in is small and close-knit, and he could easily be identified. I recently listened to your episode on the murder of Sophie Toscan du Plantier. That was perfect. Damn. Really good. Yeah, it snaps truly. (laughs) Um, and I lost my place and immediately <laughs> called F when I heard that it happened in West Cork. He has lived there all his life. Yes, he has an Irish accent. And yes, it's absolutely gorgeous. Cool, because that was my question. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was like, do you swoon daily? You yeah. swoon? Because <laughs> I would. Cause I would. Um, and I wondered if he had heard of the case or of... Ian Bailey. God damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Dropping your name up in something damn awful. It. <laughs> I wasn't expecting anything too interesting. He's not really into true crime and finds it a little spooky how obsessed I am. Uh, right? Guys always find it weird. I'm like, yeah, do. But in true Irish fashion, he gave me a casual, oh yeah, I know the guy, to be read in an Irish accent. I was going to say, I was going to try to do it, but I... Can any of you do Irish? I'm bad at Irish. It usually just goes English. Oh, yeah, I know the guy. There you go. <laughs> I know the guy. Yeah, you know that I. Um, <laughs> Irish. And he proceeded to recount the wildest events I could have expected. Uh, for F first met Ian Bailey when he Whoa. was seven at a market. He was running a stall selling wooden trays and bowls, and he sold F a small vintage toy car. The car became F's favorites, and... um. Oh, fi- oh, sorry. The car became F's favorite, and he played with it for years, not knowing it had been handled by an alleged murderer. This was only the first of multiple encounters he had with Ian Bailey, which is absolutely wild to me, but unsurprising, considering the low population of rural, rural, rural. Ireland. I told you it's the same <laughs> thing. Rural. We rural. need to abolish this word. <laughs> <laughs> F recalls teachers and parents warning children not to talk to Ian and calling him a, quote, bad guy. But no one talked about the murder specifically, and he only introduced himself as Ian. So when F met him again, selling food at a market in town of Colonicality? Perfect. Shut up. I have no idea how to say that. <laughs> you like, nailed it. Cremo. Cronicality? He only saw him as a regular old man. This part of the start. This part of the story disturbs me, especially because he bought the guy's cake. Ooh. He bought and ate a piece of cake, which had been made by a potential murderer. Eek! This shit is wild. I literally cannot. He claims the cake was very nice. <laughs> he's like, you know what? It tasted. <laughs> At good least though. it was good. Yeah, cake. he's like, it's very moist. I yeah, like there you that. go. <laughs> he describes Ian as a friendly and charismatic, and compared to. And compared him to Ted Bundy, but it should also be noted that he could be absolutely terrifying to young women. He would often flirt with them, only to become angry when they rejected his advances, and he would often change emotions quickly. A family friend of F's best friend once went to a party at a pub in Skull and spotted him standing on a bridge. She waved at him and smiled, and he turned to look at her with a cold expression on his face. 
He then smiled and waved back before switching his expression back to a blank stare. Ooh. I know. He had been spotted on this bridge many times by numerous adults close to F, including his former camp leader, who was Ian Bailey's neighbor, and his friend's parents. He often acts suspicious, and F claims that, quote, everyone knows he's guilty, but no one can prove it. Oof. The most recent encounter F had with Ian was at the age 15 when buying a book from him at a market. He showed me the book and flicked through the pages, exclaiming, he touched this. <laughs> <laughs> they talked for a while, and he gave F a bookmark for the book. F says he F says he speaks like a pretty normal guy, but he still felt uncomfortable knowing what he could have done. F has also visited Skull on numerous occasions. He says that the house is in the hills, slightly away from the main town, and that it is very quiet and secluded. He claims that there's very strange feeling there that he can't really put into words. He said, quote, maybe a presence, a ghost, or a banshee. A very heavy, morbid presence. We are very heavily present there. It's you know when you that, walk into a place like, yeah. and it's like, it does feel like that? Yeah. No, and it's the creepiest oh, yeah. feeling. The yeah. Lizzie Borden house. Oh my God. You got Have you ever been there? there? Mm -mm. The Lizzie Borden house, especially the Abby's room. Yep, Abby's really? room was crazy. And our phone started going like crazy in there. We were taking live video and it just stopped working. It kept like glitching. Entirely. And, like, and it, just, it was this weird, like heavy feeling in there yeah. that you were just like, I don't know what's going on, but mm -hmm. like... And this I've always, not. like, questioned that on ghost shows when they're like, our equipment's not working. Mm -hmm. it like, I yeah. feel this heaviness. And it's like, mm. Oh, because then you sound like those TV shows. It stopped working. Yeah. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. And we're like, no, seriously. We're like, don't make it work again. <laughs> You're like, seriously, though. It's not. But <laughs> that terrifying. was like, you were, like, feeling sick. Yeah, I got yeah. super like, nauseous. She had to, like, literally back out of that. That's yeah. happened to me yeah. before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a weird, that's a weird thing, huh? Yeah, it it's, heavy. like, inexplicable. It is. Yeah. Um, I thought that this was all absolutely wild and had to share it with you. F has had many experiences separate from this concerning aliens and the supernatural. Ooh. I will persuade him to let me share them. He seems to be followed by everything dark and morbid, including me, <laughs> <laughs> which I would never expect from anyone so outwardly joyful and colorful. I will try to attach the only photo I have of my boyfriend, age seven at the time, with Ian. Ooh, if, no. Yeah. If my poor technological skills allow it. Oh my God. I will also attach a photo of my most recent painting, which is completely unrelated, but I feel you will both appreciate the weirdness of it in a way which most people don't. Oh my God, Ooh, it's beautiful. Fantastic. I love that. If you've made it to the end, thank you for reading. Keep being amazing. Love, Sage. 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 You I keep love being amazing. Sage, first I know that's of such all. a good name. Damn. Let's see this painting. This painting's so cool. Let me see. Let me yeah, see. see this. Share with Bailey. Look at that. Oh, oh I wow. love that. That's rad. Oh, that's so cool. That is oh, wicked cool. cool. That is. Good for you, Sage. Just Go showing off. it to the room. And look at the seven-year-old with Ian Bailey. Oof. Alleged murderer. Wow. Oof. I've Alleged. actually never heard of Ian Bailey. What do you do? Do you know? So allegedly, some people believe that he murdered Sophie Toscan Duplantier. Um, it's like a very... Well, how would you describe that case? It's very controversial. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. He, um, it was the French government basically convicted or did convict him of the murder, uh -huh. but Ireland will not send him over to France. Like they won't extradite him because I think they don't think he did it. Why? So there's these very like big camps of like, he did it, he didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know. I really got, I, yeah, I have no idea. I, I did an listen. episode about it like a couple months ago. Yeah. Only yeah. it was like a one part. And then I think... There was like a Netflix documentary about it at one point. Really? Mm. Yeah. It's really it's interesting. It's an interesting case. I'll have to listen to your guys' episode. In a very mm -hmm. sad case. Yeah. Her murder happened, like, was very horrific. It was like, like the day after Christmas, I want to say, or uh, like the day before Christmas. Rude. And she was like this beautiful, just like go getter kind of girl. Cool. Like, what was you know? the motive? Do, do you know? That was the thing. Like, it didn't they seem like there was one, out. but whoever killed her, she was brutally, brutally was attacked. Angry. And that angry. bridge played a big part. In the case, too, because mm -hmm. people said they saw him on the bridge. 
And his that alibi night. So was that the bridge, bridge that he just mentioned oh, is an interesting thing because wow. mm-hmm. he would just be standing on that bridge and people either saw them and then pulled back the confession saying they didn't see him on the bridge. So that's the thing. Like you're getting all these. Yeah. But then people said that they were like scared out of confessing or yeah. like they did confess and then they were intimidated. Of it's, course. Mm, yeah. It's crazy. So it's one of those that's like really convoluted. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it's an My, interesting I always feel one. bad. Like let's just say in a perfect world, like he is 100% innocent. Could you imagine how she that's the that thing. I think but that then again, constantly. why won't he move? That's the thing. But maybe that's why. Maybe you he know? thinks that. And yeah. it's like either he's innocent and he's scared mm-hmm. that like, because as we know, he I can't mean, look move. at the West Memphis three, you can be completely innocent and still almost be put to death. Yeah, I know. So it's like, maybe he's like, I don't know if I can prove this or he's not. And he knows that they'll he be can't able go to prove. anywhere. Yeah. So it's or like he's just being an asshole, like ha ha. I'm not that's the thing. I can see it. You can see it either way, day. right? That's fucked. But that's I the do, thing. You can see it going both ways. Yeah, and I do always think though, when these people, I'm like, if they are innocent, can you imagine? Well, we always say that going like, back to Lizzie Borden about her. Yeah. the rest of her life, people would just like sing a song about her brutally mi- uh, murdering her parents. And if she I didn't know. do it, which there is a lot of evidence to support that she didn't, and mm-hmm. it was a catchy song. It, it is. was such we used a to jump rope to it when we were little. That's the thing and people would go up to like her new home Mm -hmm. there and like sing it and she's like this old lady and these kids are like throwing rocks at her door and singing that she killed her parents and it's like what if she didn't what if she just yeah. came home one like what if point, she just found them that way? She just needs to lean into it and be like, I sure did. Well, kid. that's the yeah, thing. Right. At that point, I would just be like, then you probably shouldn't be throwing rocks at my door because I'm a murderer. That's all the time. thing. Right? Just be the character. Yeah, Play into it. it. Like, let's just, was it Maplecroft? That yeah. Was her, yeah, that was the name of her uh, second, her home. second home. Wow, poor thing. I yeah. know. Do you want to, should we do one last small one? Yeah. Well, that's not small. Hold on. <laughs> Vamp for a second. Ooh, that's so, Bam, Bam. so you have a second book coming out i do congratulations thank you that's incredible are you thank proud you. i'm it's like so much fun i love that like i just want to write books like all day every day Amazing. <laughs> it's so much fun is this something that you would like to continue doing yeah i have so many ideas for future ones too oh, that's so cool. that i'm just like eager to dive into for you thank you found your, your it's very passion. like cathartic it's a really big catharsis. Once and you're I, so good at it. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Once I started doing murder mystery makeup is when I realized like, oh, writing is fun. It's so yeah. fun and it's, so therapeutic. And researching and all that. Like, I yeah. love all that part. And it's like weird. having it when you're done, like a like so all girl. this like thing mm-hmm. that you're like, I did that. Yeah. Like that's the. You did that shit, girl. Yeah, it right? feels good. It's like your little good. diary. Yeah. I know it's really, you. it's scary when you put like the, when the book went out it's so you have this weird dichotomy of feelings where you're like I want everyone to read it but I also am terrified for one person to read it like it's yeah. literally like Ugh, no one I read bet. it but everyone read it I know I can't imagine that yeah it's really it's, it's a weird feeling it yeah. is mm-hmm. it is it's like a diary because wow. even like when I write a case and then I present it I'm like oh god everybody's gonna hate it right. I can imagine yeah. it being like a book, a book. yeah you know yeah. it's crazy amazing thank you congratulations thank you you're, you're welcome, welcome. <laughs> Nothing but success for you. Oh, same right back to you. Oh, thank you. I love this. Nothing but love. Nothing but love here. <laughs> Just support you guys. I want you guys to do amazing. Okay. Oh my god. Oh, thank you. I love you so much. <laughs> so much love. <laughs> All right, I found one, and it's pretty small. Okay, cool. Okay, we're back, guys. We're that, back. That time I met a murderer. And it says, okay, so I was just listening to the That Time I Met a Murderer episode, and it completely unlocked my experience from deep within the vault. More of an, oh, haha, that happened kind of thing. Picture it. Defiance, Ohio, summer 2004. I was freshly graduated from high school and desperate for that first tattoo. So I popped into a shop town with not a stitch of research done, mind you. It was a different time. (laughs) We didn't have the internet in our hands with reviews and all that jazz. Anywho, dude man says he can do it and come back at blank time. So I go around up my best friend for support. Her sweet, sweet uh, mom tried hard to talk me out of it, something we would joke about for years after. Anywho, we get there and the guy kind of gets me all set up. Bet you can't ever in a million years guess what 18-year-old Courtney got. (laughs) Why, yes, a butterfly on my lower back. Love. (laughs) Love. stamp. Yes, perfect. Love. Very very early aughts tattoo. Uh Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. So we get going on this butte, and the guy was not gentle or kind. I kept flinching, and that made him yell at me. At one point, he stopped and said he was done and not going to finish. 
Uh, <laughs> he did keep going and did finish. And I was the proud owner of a new tramp stamp. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward six months, my, su- my support friend called me and said to check out the Toledo Blade. Toledo. Thank you. Wow, that was dumb. <laughs> Toledo. <laughs> Toledo down. Blade, front page. So I hop on my good de- old desktop and found an article about the guy who did my tattoo and his girlfriend and how they were wanted for murder. Oh, can you imagine like having you that? have a tattoo by him now? Yeah, that's a lot. That's true. Oof. Girlfriend lured a guy into a sketchy motel with the promise of sexy time, and tattoo guy was waiting there where he proceeded to rob and shoot him. And oh. poor guy just wanted some nookie. Oh, that's really sad. <laughs> that's horrible. And also they wrote the thing, not me. Um <laughs> I had to do some digging to find any articles about this because it's been almost two decades. Oof, that hurts to say. But I found where they fled to Kentucky and he ended up killing the girlfriend. Oh my God. He then fled to Nashville where he was captured and brought back to Ohio. He was convicted and sentenced to 32 years. Four years later, he was talking with his parole officer and confessed to killing the girlfriend and said where her (gasps) body could be found. So now he's in for life. Damn. And then they attached the link for us. It says... Um, so yeah, fucking wild. But it does make the story of my first tattoo a good party story. <laughs> wow. That's true. That's uh, yeah. true. I would bring that one up. Silver yeah, linings, mm-hmm. I suppose. For yeah, real. for sure. They said, thank you for reminding me of it, but please share the next time you uh, please share the next time you do a meta murderer episode. I would lose what cool is left in my 36-year-old self. You gals are awesome and I've grown to love and depend on your podcast. I always listen while I'm opening up my bar at work and it helps me get past the ugh, I'm at work feeling. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. That is I bonkers. I can't believe how many people have encountered just murders on the street like this. You know? Right? So many. We have so yeah. many we, that are not even, like, in this folder. Yeah. Like, just, like, lingering in the email. That's oh, yeah. so wild. It's crazy. We could do so many of these installments. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. <laughs> do you have anything you want to plug? I'm sure you do because yeah. you're always working on all plug, cool plug, shit. Plug. Murder, mystery, and makeup. As usual, Hell continuing yes. on. My favorite. I, I love, love your murder mystery makeup. Me too. Um, also, Dark History, we're ending season two and we're starting season three in the Ooh, summer. I which is love exciting. Dark History. Me too. It's so, it's so, I love it. Highly very, recommend. Yeah. Thank you. Go Thank check you. it out. Yeah. You yeah. can find me anywhere you listen to podcasts. Yeah. Um, social media, whatever, you know? All I'm here. I'm stuff. around. <laughs> I'm just here. You know, you can find me if you want. If not, that's okay too. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. <laughs> you can find me floating in the or somewhere. Thank you here. I'm still. Very honored. I appreciate Thank you guys. You. you guys need to come out to California so I can we, show you LA so I can show you my place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On my show. We would I love know. that. Yes. I know. We that still would have be to do so something. I've we never do. been to California. You haven't? Only when I was like a little baby and I don't remember it. Okay. Yeah. I've been there, but I was visiting an ex-boyfriend who was like the worst ever. Yeah. So, so we need to give so you a different view. I would love to have view. a better yeah, view of so California. So we need a different experience. Yeah, I need to. I can help Start you. that one Yeah, over. we'll come hit. Yeah. We'll yeah, redo for it. Sure. For sure. Yeah. That'd be fun. And yeah. we can go on those Hollywood, like, they have their own little murder tours. Yes. You know, we can see, like, the Manson house. Like the Black oh. Dahlia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That would be cool. It's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Not really, but. <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know. <laughs> like, it's a nice the updated house is. now. <laughs> yeah. <That's> good. <laughs> you know, right. Cool. <laughs> nice <laughs> it's nice people. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Sunshine. But offensive. <laughs> I love it. No, seriously, thank you so much for coming on. And thank you guys for listening. We hope you keep listening. And we hope you keep it weird. weird. But not so weird that you met a murderer because holy cow, that's crazy. And listen to your instincts. Yeah. yeah. Your keep it so weird that you listen to those. And keep it so weird that you keep telling us about when you do meet murders. Yes. And don't yes. be afraid to say no. Yeah. Be All a bitch. Of the above. We have lots of advice. Yeah. For today. <laughs> don't keep it so weird that you're not a raging bitch. Yes. Just channel your inner <laughs> New England Aries Italian woman. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh-huh. That one listener's grandma. Do it. All right. Bye. 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 Thank you for having me. Anytime. <laughs>